So I have this uh, check request form that would be filled out by who, whomever. Um, and basically it's going to go through an approval workflow. And I submit the form. So now it's got that the approver that it has to go to first is called the supervisor. So the next time this form gets opened up, it actually switches over to this another view in InfoPath called approvals. And it's simply, I made it so that this approvals uh, view locks down all these original fields to read only. So none of the approvers can mess with that original data. But they, it's very simple. Basically, they just either approve or reject it, and they make a comment. My big debate with this was, you know, when you use tasks in a workflow, it I like to, instead of that, rather keep the whole approval process inside the form, which makes it much more simple for the end users, and they don't have two confusing different places to go when they're approving the form. So. The next approver opens it up, and you can see that when that – now I'm just logged in as me, so this is on just my regular my site for my company, so I don't, I don't really have the ability to go in and log in as multiple people since I'm on my, our live production environment but, um, and not my VM. But as you can see, when my, uh, my NT login is just Laura. So when I hit the Submit button, when I approved it, it grabbed my NT login and it wrote it to this read-only field that nobody can change, and it also wrote the date uh, as to when I hit the Submit button. So this way I'm keeping all that information about who approves it inside the form, and I'm when they hit the Submit button, it's recording that information about who that person is. So, of course, it's still me. So it submits it, and then there's, I think there's one more level of approval. It's basically all these approval sections are just the same, and I'm going to approve it one last time. You can, I've had one that I did for a customer that was up to like eight different little sections in there. So you can just keep going and going and have as many as you need, and it's all just using this one view where all the approval sections are. Uh, we have conditional rules to hide and show these sections according to what that current approver value is. So I'll show you that in a minute. So now the whole thing's finished, and the whole uh, the form is on a read-only view, so that you can basically just read it when the whole thing's been approved and it's over. You can still open up the form and just look at it, but you can't change anything. So here, oops, so here's the form, and uh, for the for the process. So this all has to do is going to be tied in with the workflow. So this is the New, this is the new view. This is what they fill out when they first fill out the form. And I have it so that I've got these hidden fields in here. So these aren't fields that are necessarily going to show anywhere, but these are fields that I'm writing to behind the scenes as, as the workflow progresses. So I have a submit button. When they hit and they first submit it, it writes this. It takes this uh, current approver field, which is just a field that just has the verbiage of what the name of that approval level is, like supervisor or um, director, CEO, or whatever it's called. So that's going to be like a hard-coded value. And then I also have it so that it increments a number up. And then what I can also do is have a next approver name. So that way I can go in and do things like grab the person's manager name, or um, have it, in some cases, some companies want to have like a people picker, picker here so they can pick who the next approver is. But whatever that next approver name is, I'm going to go ahead and write that name so that when I create a workflow, all it has to do is look at this one value of who that next approver is for that phase. And, and that way I don't have to have a ton of fields that I'm sending up to SharePoint. I can just have whatever the current approver is, see, and that's just um, it's going to say director or whoever, and then the name. And the name is just going to be like an NT login name or, a, or even a SharePoint group name as to who that next approval email is going to go to. So when they hit submit, I want it to go to my manager. So whoever that person is hitting the submit button, I want it to go to that person's manager. So what I've done here is I've used this user profile service and I tap into this web service to get information about that currently logged in user. 
So I've got the user profile service so that when it is a new form, so basically when a form is opened, it queries this user profile service. So it just grabs the information about the logged in you know, by default just whoever the logged in user is. And then once it grabs that information, there's going to be a manager name, there's going to be a manager field, and this comes from Active Directory. So if your Active Directory is accurate, then you'll be able to, it'll be very powerful the way you can route workflows just based on information about the logged in user. So you can do things like look at the logged in user's job title and do, you know, make, a, have that as a condition and do things according to what's in their job title. You can do things like, you know, grab the manager name. You can query that manager and grab their manager name. So you can do all these powerful things when you have your accurate information in your user profiles. And I know that's a huge hurdle for a lot of people, especially with big companies. It's not already accurate. Um, so once that's in place and it's accurate, then that's what you can do. So what I did was I'm, I'm filling in this manager name field here, it's just a text field, with whatever that manager, now I've got a lot of clicks here that I'm going through, but whatever that manager value is in the user profile. Now, if you want to know like the details of what all I clicked on to get to this point, um, on my blog there's a link on the left side uh, to Lori Gowan's blog, and she's got the, a blog post that she did a it's like the very first, very first blog post she ever did. So if you can click archive on the left side, it's got go back to the very beginning. And so it's like the very first two blog posts she did. She goes through the steps of how to do this. Um, Clayton Cobb also he's another MVP. He's got a whole bunch of information about this user profile service. Tapping into it um, on his blog, he does a lot of info paths. So that's I'm not going to go too much into exactly how I got it, but I'm getting the manager name. And then so what I want to do is when they hit submit, I want to say the next approver is just going to be whoever that manager is. So I'm going to add another, set another field's value here when they hit submit. And say next approver name. And then take the value that I already wrote to that manager name field a minute ago and just make that the next approver. And that way and I can still keep that manager name. It's just going to stay here in this manager name field in case I ever need it later. Um, so it sets the value of the manager name. And, and so what I'm going to do is I've got this workflow. So the great thing about this workflow that I'm going to show you is that it's a reusable workflow that I have simply based on the content type of form. So this is something, the way I've created it is something that you can create a whole bunch of forms just like this with the same concept with the same uh, approval steps in it and be able to use that same exact reusable workflow on all of your forms this way. So this is my reusable workflow. I, uh, I basically, when I went to create a new, new workflow, I just clicked reusable. And so I'm going to go in, ahead and go in and hit edit the workflow. So it's very, very simple. So I've got the very, the very end of the workflow, the last approver, when they submit it, it sets the value to final. So I have that just if that's the case across the board in all my forms. And uh, we also have along the way someone might reject the form. So if it's not final and if it's not rejected, I'm just going to go look at whoever that next approver is and send them this nice generic email that says, here's a form for you to approve. And it's going to have like a link to the form, and if I have time, I'll go ahead and, and create that link. But So it's just going to say whoever the next approver happens to be, it sends them an email. Otherwise, if it's final, you usually want to send a different email. So if that's the very last stage of the workflow of the entire form, you're going to usually send an email to whoever created that form, whoever submitted it, to let them know that their form's been approved at all levels. And again, you put a link for them to open up the form. Um, otherwise, and then you might have different, sometimes you might have different things you want to do if it's rejected. So if, reject, if it's rejected, you're going to send an email to whoever submitted the form, letting them know their form was rejected. And I just put the modified by information in there so it will say the name of who, the display name of whoever rejected the form, that modified by value. 
So it's very simple. So any form that you have, you can use the same workflow, and it can just be used across the board. So since I created this as a reusable workflow, I created a couple of these important columns that I'm using in all my forms. I created them as site columns so, and, and use them as association columns. So this current approver field, it's just text. I'm going to use the same exact field name in all my forms. I mean, so I had to create it as a site column. And so wherever I put this uh, workflow, it's going to use, it's going to go, know to go use these site columns because these are the association columns that this workflow will always use. And then, and then the next approver name is just going to be the value of that, whoever the next approver is. So those same, those same site columns are also what I use when I publish my workflow, when I, when I publish my form. So that whenever you go through that publishing process, you have to make sure and pick those, and those, for, those columns that already exist, those site columns. So when I hit the Add button and I pick Current Approver, and it gives me a choice of what I want that field to be called when it goes up to SharePoint, it gives you an option in there to pick the already existing site columns. So you're going to need to pick those already existing site columns so that all this will be tied in together. It will all be associated for these two fields. All right, so my form gets submitted. Um, it sets the value of the next approver name to whoever happens to be that person's manager. And then so the first time the form gets submitted, an email gets sent to my manager. So the next time the form gets submitted, what's going to happen? I want an email to go to whoever is supposed to be the controller, right? So whoever that next person is. Now in this case, I don't have anybody in here yet. But I'm going to go ahead and just, just as an example show you how we can put a people picker in here. So maybe they need to be able to just pick whoever the controller is um, just hypothetically. So I'll go ahead and put a person or group field in here. And so I'm going to let them pick somebody and then submit it. So I'll go ahead and go look at my submit rules. So if it's approved, now there are extra little things that I'm going to need to do to go behind the scenes and say, you know, make sure that they fill this out, make sure maybe make the submit button grayed out if they don't pick somebody, and little things like that I'll have to do with rules just to fine tune it. But just overall, I'm going to go ahead and go in here and say, next approver name, and I'll clear out whatever I was doing before. Let's see, next approver name is going to be equal to whoever they pick in this in this uh, people picker. So I have to go in here and find the value. I'm going to use that account ID. So when they pick somebody in the people picker, it stores the account ID of, who, of whoever they pick in this field. So I'm going to say set the next approver name to that account ID. Therefore, when they submit the form, the next, that next email will go to that person. I also have it setting the the approval number to the next number up, which is two, and this is one of the things I went over in that first demo, but basically each of these sections have a rule based on just that approval number to hide and show it based on that number incrementing up. So every time they hit submit in each of these sections, they submit it and make it go up to the next number basically. So each of these sections is just based off of that, that uh, number. Um, all right, so the next submit, let's go ahead and just use a, let's just say that the director, we'll just use a SharePoint group. And we'll say if, uh, let's see, approval, um, let's set approver name to director. So as long as there's a SharePoint group in here, um, I'll just call it director group. As long as there's a SharePoint group on my site called Director Group with that exact name, it will recognize it and it will send an email to whoever's in that group. So I definitely recommend using groups when you can in here so that you're not hard coding any individual's name inside of your form. All right, so I set the value of the next approval approver name to Director Group. And then when the director's done, that's the end. So when they submit it, it it uh, sets the current approver as final, and so then it's done. So we don't need to send it to anybody else. And then let's see, let me go ahead and publish this, and we'll run through it and see how it goes. 